So I'm the chair of the Eco Hub in Gamlingay. I'll tell you where that is. This is our tagline. And do you know what? Sitting here, I'm thinking, do you know what? It really isn't true. But I love to promote the idea because what I say is we're probably the greenest village in the UK, but I'm praying we will be the least green village in the UK because everybody else should take over, move on, move on. An answer to some of the questions about technology. We're all learning. We don't get it right on day one, but you know what? It's getting easier to do. The power supplies are getting more reliable. Feeding tariffs are getting easier to measure and so on. The more we do it, the better it gets. So who, are, who the hell am I? Um, I'm an artist. I, I look at everybody's CVs here. They're all professional eco things. I'm a painter and a sculptor. I used to be um, a director of Vodafone and I worked at BP and Royal Bank of Scotland as a consultant. Um, and I spent a lot of time in my corporate life persuading people to stop cooling data centres and start opening the window, for example, instead of putting chillers. And then if you're going to open the window, why don't you duct it? into the office next door where you're paying a fortune to heat the damn place. Stuff like that. We've got to keep saying these things to the corporates. They can do better. I'm also a director of um, Gambling Gay Turbine, which is very interesting because one of my slides you've already seen. Okay, so Gambling Gay is on the western edge of Cambridgeshire, bordering Bedfordshire, and um, Megan sent me an email saying, well, are you Bedfordshire or are you Cambridgeshire? It's a really good question, which I didn't answer because we can't answer it. All our kids go to school in Bedfordshire and all our other services come from Cambridgeshire. But when we want a bus, we have to persuade Bedfordshire to provide a bus in Cambridgeshire to take us to the only station nearby, which is in Bedfordshire. Has anybody tried to manage cross-county borders? It gets even funnier when you see which bit of the road they stopped gritting <coughs> in winter. Anyway, so we're about 4,000 people. I want to read you this though because it's great. The one thing that puts Gambling Gay on the map is Karl Marx thought a deadly lassitude, a hopeless surrendering to filth reigns in Gambling Gay. That, that was only yesterday, yes. <laughs> but now we've moved on. We've got an eco hub which I'm going to talk about. I'm going to talk a little bit about the turbine but I want to say and in response to some of these things about big generation. Community generation for me is about a lot of small initiatives coming together. It's about 200 houses that generate and then 200 small projects and then another 500. I think in 10 years, 20 years, 30 years time we're going to get the mobile phone equivalent. So we all have a little mobile phone now 20 years ago, unimaginable. In 20 years time we're going to have micro generation, small devices that generate all the time like when you open a door, the hinge generates a little bit. When you open a window, it generates something. I don't know. It's, it, the kids will sort it out. I won't. One of the things we're very keen on is controlling our own resources. And this is one of the things that drove us to do so, put in place so many green technologies. I, I want to say this without sounding like a survivalist, you know, loading up with ammo and bottled water. But there is a clear threat that rural communities will be the first to go dark when there's not enough power. If anybody's seen the numbers, there isn't enough power planned to cover the uh, demand that's already available. So we're thinking, well, the lights are going to go off sometime. There is a huge technical problem we haven't fixed yet. Does anybody know what it is? No? You're kind of getting there. It's we cannot access our own power because it all goes into the grid. You, you put up a wind turbine or something, it goes into the grid. And when the lights go out for whatever reason, brownouts or something, you can't then sort of take the cable out and plug it into Gambling Gay. But we are thinking quite hard about how to do that because one of the things we wanted to preserve was the fridge in the chemist shop, the heats and lights in the old people's home, the lighting, the absolute things that have to work. So when we do get brownouts, when we think they're going to be... I, mean, I think Eon has actually said in the next five or six years we're going to start getting them. We want to have some robustness built into our village. Some technologies we can use directly, some we can't. Micro technologies at the home level, you can access immediately. Of course, on a cold and windy, stormy night, I don't know what you do, but we're working at it. And tomorrow we're thinking more about how we relearn our relationship to our community Everybody in our village works outside the village, more or less. They commute to London and so on. 
and everybody comes along to build more houses. We say, that's great, that's fantastic. Where's the work going to be? Or are we all going to have to go to London again? It's a difficult picture. But we built an eco-hub. Why did we build an eco-hub? We already had a village centre, um, a, a, a sort of... Hang on, I'm going to skip two slides to show you what it was. That was what it looked like. About the most miserable building you've ever seen in your life. And it was condemned. Nobody went there. It cost £30,000 a year to heat. The mortgage on the new building is less than that. Extraordinary, isn't it? We ha so we didn't have it, but we wanted to have a new centre that would be self-sufficient, that would prove some of the technologies. This is about four years ago when we designed it. And we thought, we really want to test some of these things out. We called some really good, um, basically, commercial firms to say, how do you do it? And how do you do it so that it works? We don't want to be tinkering all day. We want a system that's in a cupboard or in a room. We shut the door and it keeps working and working and working. And we want that power to keep the doors open. Our, our eco hub is 21 degrees year in, year out. Come rain, come shine, whatever. And we want that. We want the place to be open to all. We want a multi-use place. So I'll tell you a little bit about that as well. But it's part of an engaging and educating the community in what these technologies are all about. I spend an awful lot of time giving tours around the Eco Hub. I've done four or five presentations in Cambridge this year alone to communities who are building new facilities, new community centres and so on. And I go along and I say, well, this is what you do. You do this, you do this, you do this. And of course, you've done ground source heat pumps, haven't you? And they go, huh? I say, what, this is Cambridge? You had a green field and you didn't put ground source in? How insane is that? And you'll realise how insane it is when I tell you it's an eight-year payback on ground source, if you do it when you're building the thing. We're working with um, Trinity College at the moment over some land in Gamlingay. They want to put 60 houses up. And I, I went to a public meeting the other day. I said, where's the ground source? Oh, well, you know, uh, <laughs> well, it's not us, it's the architects. And the architects said, well, it's not us, it's the builders. And the builders said, well, we haven't got this yet. And it's not going to happen because they're not joined up. They don't know what they're doing yet. And they still don't know what they're doing on roads. Anybody know when roads get planned? A long time after the traffic has killed you. That's when they plan the roads, and we're campaigning about that. How do you build an eco-hub, though? Get the heroes. And we haven't much said much about people yet, although the last presenter did. It's all about people. Getting community edu energy projects together and all those initiatives is about finding the heroes that will stand up and do stuff. I'm absolutely delighted to see your slides about the number of people that are taking part in, uh, in Lewis. Really, really good. Um, one of the reasons we're very keen on all of this in, in Gambling Gay is, and, and you see what I said there, most villages aren't, aren't f for or against. They don't know what they feel about it until you actually say, well, how about if we try this or build this and so on? And slowly they come on board. And that's a really important point. Because when we started building the Eco Hub, I would guess there was a 20% really against it. What a waste of public money. All this technology and all that. When we put the turbine up, how many people, there was 4,000 people, how many people wrote a letter saying we don't want a wind turbine in our village? Anybody want to guess? 20. Yeah, 20. We had 30 letters from children and their basic message was, do you want a wind turbine in the village? They went, duh, <laughs> which I think is possibly the most eloquent uh, expression of support we ever had. But here's the thing. I've been working on these, these systems for 10 or 20 years with, with government and with politicians. They will not do it. To this day, the line of consumption of fuel in this country, you can't see a dent on it. There's not one policy has actually made a dent in the national fuel demand. So who's going to do it? Is the, world, is the G8 going to do it? The G20? The G30? Who? And the, the answer is, after 30 years, we really can't see anybody doing anything except ourselves. When you go to the villages and the communities, you find very exciting things taking place. So we said, let's get on board. Let's do it for ourselves. We, to build the, the Eco Hub, though, we had to get a lot of money together. We used Section 106 money. I'm, I'm assuming everybody knows what that is. Good. Um, did somebody say no? <laughs> oh, OK. When a builder or a planner comes in and takes one of your village fields, 
and builds a small estate on it, you have a right to say, well, who's going to pay for all the infrastructure around it? That's basically Section 106. So they give you money to help your community. And it might be for parks, it might be for schools, doctors, whatever. But we decided we were going to use Section 106 money for a community centre. Um, we had to get our councillors committed, and some say they should be committed. Um, we've got a good group of green activists. There's 200 strong in Gamlingay Environmental Action Group, of which I'm a member, and we are involved in every planning application that comes in. We are consulted by the county on our thoughts because we don't just say no, we say, here's a suggestion. Here's a good way to do it instead of the way you've thought about it. Have you thought about Have you thought about And that's the dialogue we go. We're making full use of this space for the community. We've got libraries, schools, everything going on in the place. Um, and we're, in fact, we're expanding up to phase two now. And all of this generates a surplus of £5,000 a year from just one building. That one building generates... Remember what I said? £30,000 a year to heat it. Now it generates a 5K surplus. And the technologies we're using is ground source heating for everything. We've got PV on the roof. We've got solar thermal for heating all the waters, for the showers, for the uh, facilities for footballers and sports and so on. We use grey water recycling. And the new technologies we're putting in place uh, are LEDs. We'd replace, after four years, we're replacing all the light bulbs. I would hope these are all LEDs, guys. Yeah, because LEDs, what's the payback on LEDs? It's going to cost us 15 grand, the payback, six years. Incredible. When people need to do the maths and find the facts, and when you do the facts on the, on the alternative technologies, they're incredible. I don't know anything that gives us six-year payback like that, but we're doing it very quickly. So we're running at 60% occupancy, and... It's a very successful thing. I've got to say, we get awards. I keep going to awards things and collecting gongs for architecture, for um, energy use and so on. We're, we're rated A. We couldn't get an A plus because we recycled half the building and that half of the building was a very old concrete floor. So we had to build on that. But we've got an A rating for energy efficiency, which we're very proud of. How am I doing for time, boss? Um, you've got five, five minutes. So five. Perfect. So here's a couple of photos. Uh, sorry, they're not brilliant, but that's what we looked like. And it was cold, miserable, and it had um, one of those, you know, one of those guys who goes, come on, everybody out, everybody out, it's midnight, you know. <laughs> we wanted something a lot better than that, and we got it. That's what, that, that wall there is, is the wall behind that one. And this is, can you see it? Sorry, it's not brilliant, but that's the library um, inside, and it is warm and light and welcoming. And one of the policies that I put in place was, it's always open. None of this village hall, I'll see if somebody can find the key. It's open at nine o'clock in the morning, through to six, and then very often in the evenings. And everybody has access to it, and everybody knows about it. And we get people from 20 mile radius coming to events there. So we have music, dance, schools, libraries, the whole lot. It's, a, it's an exciting place. But not everything's easy. <laughs> I had to put this, it's not easy being green. That is a song by Kermit the Frog, but never mind. We have to learn a lot of things. Here's a really good example. So we said to the cleaners, we want you to use green cleaning products. They said, yes, sir, right away, sir. It takes twice as long to do it. Do you want to pay the manpower for twice as long to do it? There are issues. The issues, though, with the technology are maintenance. Anybody built, anybody built any of these things? PVs or wind turbines and so on, you'll know about the maintenance. If you don't budget for maintenance over the next 20 years, you'll go wrong. So we do, we put money away every year. Um, inverters have to be replaced every 10 years and so on. And um, we, maintenance is the thing which closes most community centres. Everybody opens community centres all the time. But 10 years down the line, that's when it really counts. Did we look after it? Did we paint it? Did we keep the technology running? So we keep a sinking fund of 21k a year. OK. Conscious of time. Moving on. The Gambling Gay Community Turbine. The reason I put this in is because it's part of the picture of Gambling Gay as community energy. We are members of CEE, <laughs> as you well know. Uh, and I'm a director of the Ga Gambling Gay Turbine. It was totally fun. I'm not going to read all this because you've heard all this message already, but funded by local people who are shareholders and businesses and individuals. 
Uh, it offsets our carbon, generates about 16% of gambling gay needs. And here's the really important thing. We put 6K back into the community. And again, I'm not going to read these, but we give money back to the community. They supported the turbine, so we give them money for their things. And do you know how we s sustain the green message? Is we give them half of any green project they've got, which means twice as much is going into those projects. Do you know what? People in Gambling Gay are totally on board with this. You go, are you green? Yeah, of course we are. What can, more can we do? Where are we going with this? And now I'm going to show you a slide you've already seen. It's not, it's not often you get to talk at one of these things and one of your own photographs turns up in, the, uh, in an earlier slide. But anyway, um, this was the opening of our wonderful turbine and it's been fantastic. It's generated a lot of money for the shareholders and for the village. And do you know how noisy it is? Um, I was once disturbed by a nightingale. I couldn't hear the turbine anymore. It was difficult. And I was right underneath it. Most of the um, scare stories about these things, whoops, sorry, um, you've got to get past them. There's a lot of people, the press will always look for a bad story. And when we put this up, we said, well, where's the flicker? Where's the noise? Where's the thrum? The best one we had was a local airfield that said, and I quote, we, <laughs> we've actually got it written on the inside of the control room there, there will be dead pilots littering the fields. So we asked, is it that pilots can't see it and have no means of steering round it? You know. So we ask us, ah, bad time, yeah, okay. Um, so what are we doing next in Gambling Gay in terms of energy? Transition towns is something I'm glad was mentioned already. Um, I'm very interested in relearning skills uh, in the town, but generation itself, we need to teach people how to access green technology to power their homes and to contribute to the national grid and so on, how community energy works, but also how individual energy works. I've mentioned microgeneration already. I think that's going to be an important theme in the future. We're looking at permaculture. Anybody know what that is? We've got three or four families, uh, you would, yes, <laughs> um, converting their homes to live from their home and their small garden. And there are ways of growing enough fruit and veg and so on in a fairly small plot of land, as, uh, an average garden. We've also been promoting um, allotments, a lot of allotments. And again, part of the power initiative is a zero energy toilet. I won't tell you how it works. So, dis distribu I haven't put it on the slide, sorry. But we, one of the things we talk about a lot at the Eco Hub is the distribution of the benefits because there is a perception there's a cadre of people over here that put money in they take part in all these green things and the, all these wonderful initiatives and we're all getting terribly rich at it yeah right how do you engage the the wider community and it's actually about the distribution of benefits and showing them that it's been good for them and it's been helpful to the community so dispersal of profits or part of the profits to community initiatives is a great way to go but also they, they are realising that people from the community are going all over the country talking about it and people are coming from all over Europe to see the Eco Hub and how it works and so on. A lot of them just want to go in the engine room to see how that functions but that's, that's another thing. Am I done? Thanks boss. <laughs>